Hello, my name is Ricky, and welcome back for another military reaction. Uh, I got this one suggested. It's on a channel called Mark Felton Productions. And uh, it says when Britain nuked America twice, like nuked the, the food. I'm very eager to find out however they mean with nuke. It couldn't be a bomb, can it? What did I miss? <laughs> it's like there's something just goes past you, you know. Everyone knows it except you. You have no idea. Like, what? Really? If you do enjoy the content, don't forget to smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. That's something I would greatly appreciate. And if you haven't checked out Mark Felton Productions, you find the link for the video we're going to watch and, of course, for the channel located right down there in the description. So go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. Thank you. Um, before we watch, we say thank you so much to the channel members and the Patreons. The Patreons. Thank you so much for the excellent support. And a big shout out to the Supreme Tier donators over by Patreon and, of course, channel membership. Personal shout outs goes to the ultimate supporters. Uh, Deja, Walt, Dwayne, Dana, Troy, Robert, Matt, Lon, Barb, Brian, Kathy. Such an amazing list right there. If you want to join them, click join to become a member or check out the coolest link ever pinned on top of all the other comments. And as you can see, we got glorious sun today. I'm not blocking that out. I'm a sweet. It's dark for seven months here. And it's like this. For what? All right, let's watch this. By popular demand, I have increased the size of the video over here. A couple of people were complaining about it being too small. So I increased it ever so slightly. Hopefully that is enough. And now we're going to find out when Britain nuked America. Not only once, but twice. I just got to make sure that everything is working. Yes. So crank it up and do this, and we got 12 minutes of whatever this is. In the 1960s, Great Britain nuked the United States not once, but twice. What? Fortunately for all concerned, the attacks were only training exercises, but so embarrassing were these attacks that they were hidden from the American public for about 50 years, as well as being strenuously denied to the American press for decades. As far as America was concerned, its defences were 99% effective. But in simulated attacks, Royal Air Force bombers managed to penetrate U.S. airspace to launch nuclear attacks on New York City and several other important urban centers. Before I tell you how, a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream, a subscription streaming service created by the founder of the Discovery Channel that offers thousands of documentaries and non-fiction titles from some of the world's best filmmakers, including exclusive originals. Like Adolf Hitler, The Itinerary, an immense study of Hitler's movements from childhood to the end of his life, and D-Day, Hidden Traces, that Damn. uses archaeology to uncover what was left behind in Normandy by Allied and Axis troops from helmets to bunkers. Get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month or $19.99 a year. And for my audience, the first 30 days are completely free if you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash Mark Felton and use the promo code Mark Felton during the sign up process. Nice. Curiosity Stream, the best streaming service for lovers of history. How did the British manage to penetrate the world's most heavily defended airspace? The answer is surprisingly simple and consists of two words. Avro. I gotta tell you, when British people do like this narration, I don't know why it just feels so real, right? Vulcan.
The Vulcan first flew in 1952. The team that created it, led by Roy Chadwick, who had designed the famous Lancaster Heavy Bomber of World War II. A jet-powered, tailless, delta-wing, high-altitude strategic bomber, the Vulcan was the backbone of Britain's nuclear airborne deterrent during most of the Cold War, serving from 1956 until retirement in 1984. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's a nice rumble. This is the story of Exercise Sky Shield, when Britain nuked its closest ally, exposing how the Soviet Union could have done the same for real. In 1960, the United States decided to... What? I didn't know that was a thing. What a great thing. I wonder if they still do this. Like, basically, let's pretend that well, we got, we got, we got some new uh, anti-air going on now on the West Coast. How would we know that they're actually going to do the job? Well, we just tell our allies to just try to bomb the crap out of us with fake bombs. I mean, that is probably the best way to test, you know, defense. Instead of real time, like, oh shit, they're coming, let's hope the crap actually works. That's a marvelous idea. To run the largest test of its air defenses in history. Exercise Sky Shield 1 occurred on the 10th of September 1960, and all commercial air traffic over the US and Canada was grounded, amounting to a thousand US commercial flights and 700 general aviation Ooh. aircraft, plus a further 31 foreign flights due to land in North America. The US Strategic Air Command would launch B-52 Strato Fortresses and nice. B-47 Strato Jets to simulate a massive Soviet nuclear bomber force approaching North America from north and south. 360 Whoa. US interceptor aircraft stood ready to defeat these enemy aircraft, which numbered 310. Among those 310 aircraft were eight Royal Air Force Vulcan B-2 nuclear bombers. A flight of four flew from Scotland, while the other four launched from the British territory of Bermuda in the Atlantic Ocean. The American plan was to detect these enemy bombers by radar and other early warning systems. And then they would be intercepted and destroyed in simulated attacks by US jet fighters and missile batteries. The attacking bombers split their attacks between high and low altitude. The defending fighters did very well against the stratojets and strato fortresses, intercepting many of them. But the Vulcans proved more elusive opponents. The Vulcan flew at the highest altitude of the simulated Soviet bombers, cruising at 56,000 feet. Oh, shit. One was successfully intercepted at this altitude over Goose Bay, Labrador, by a United States Air Force F-101 Voodoo but the other seven Vulcans all managed to penetrate American airspace to launch simulated bombing attacks on US cities. They then turned around and landed at Stephenville, Newfoundland. The question was, how had the Vulcan managed it? The answer was their highly advanced electronic countermeasures systems and the Vulcan's amazing maneuver. We're talking about this was the 60s and the technology was that forward already. That's insane. <clears throat> that, is in, that is completely blowing my mind. That this was the 60s and they already have countermeasures versus radar. The 60s. I think we really underestimate the progress that is the 60s. I and mean, we walked on the moon, boom. Maneuverability. For example, the flight of four aircraft that approached from Bermuda were successful because three of them put up a wall of electronic interference that prevented interception, while the fourth Vulcan carried out a simulated nuclear strike. This was all rather embarrassing for Strategic Air Command, which quickly buried all stories about British bombers having nuked US targets and confidently assured the American public that US air defenses were, as I said, 99% effective. 
However, the following year, the Americans invited the RAF to take part in Exercise Sky Shield 2. Perhaps the USAF was determined to show that the Vulcan's previous success was only a fluke, a one-time only event. Sky Shield 2, which occurred on the 14th of August 1961, was an even bigger event than the first one. It caused 2,900 US and Canadian flights to be grounded, affecting 125,000 commercial passengers. Oh my! During the exercise, 125 US and British bombers would be pitted against 1,800 fighters and 250 missile sites, and over 200,000 Air Force personnel from the US and Canada. Look at that beast. Oh, my days. Wow. Coming up on 16 and a half seconds. Now, continuing. Yeah, but I'm still ready. Ready. Now. Again, eight Vulcan B-2s participated, split again into two flights. One attacking on the northern route from RAF Lossiemouth in Scotland via Canada, and the other four aircraft on a southerly route from Kindley Air Force Base Bermuda. The B-47 Stratojets simulated low-level Soviet bombers. The B-52s would attack between 35,000 and 42,000 feet, while the Vulcans again operated at the highest altitude, 56,000 feet. 56,000 feet. At the massive NORAD, or North American Air Defense Bunker, at Colorado Springs, the U.S. top brass was joined by the RAF's Air Marshal Sir Kenneth Cross of Bomber Command and Sir Wallace Kyle, Chief of the RAF Technical Training Command, to monitor the exercise. Just before 2 p.m., U.S. interceptors pounced on the B-52s, approaching at the mid to high altitude level. The Vulcans also came in from the north, and again, due to the Vulcans' high-tech jamming equipment... Well, look for the Vulcans, because, like, they are the only airplane that actually managed to penetrate and actually do this. And we, know, we all know it's going to happen again, because it says twice, Racky. We all know. It's not going to be a surprise, is it? Only one was shot down by an oh. F-101 voodoo fighter. In fact, large numbers of U.S. fighters were scrambled, but they concentrated almost exclusively on the B-52s. When the Vulcans came over, the interceptors did not have sufficient fuel remaining to climb to 56,000 feet plus and engage them. The surviving three Vulcans conducted their attacks successfully, turned around and landed at Stephenville, Newfoundland. The southern attack force of four Vulcans from Bermuda reached a position 50 miles off the U.S. coast before fighters were scrambled to intercept. Again, three of the Vulcans unleashed an electronic jamming screen that kept the attacking F-102 Delta daggers busy while the fourth aircraft crept round to the north and sneaked through. This Vulcan proceeded to land at Plattsburgh Air Force Base in New York. If this had been a real attack, New York City could have been reduced to a smoking, irradiated hole in the ground. Wow. Many of the stratojets and stratofortresses had also managed to evade interception and launch simulated nuclear attacks, but not at the kind of success rate that the Vulcans enjoyed. In two massive exercises of eight Vulcans that attacked on each occasion, seven had got through to their targets, an astounding survival rate against the huge might of the U.S. air defenses. The Vulcans show that with the right aircraft, America could be laid wide open to a nation-ending assault, something which the Soviet Union would have been very interested in.
Fortunately for all concerned, the relationship between Britain and the United States never changed from special to decidedly antagonistic, and the Vulcans never came in anger. The American government yeah. also tried to make damn sure that nobody ever found out about the Vulcans nuking American cities. The US Air Force was very quick to deny rumors that RAF planes had once again successfully penetrated US airspace. In fact, unfortunately, I'm going to say I'm going to tell you this. I don't think I don't and I don't think and I do not see it as a negative thing. And if you do that, that's completely wrong. I mean, this was a, a like a a situation where they was checking if the if the air air defense was solid and it was not so good good okay so where did it go wrong oh all right over there cool now we know that all right this wouldn't happen today definitely not happen today but i'm telling you i i wouldn't be embarrassed i understand that they cover up because they thought it was embarrassed uh, embarrassing that it happened but again i'm telling you how would you know if something is not working if you do not try it i'm saying it i'm not i'm, I'm not sitting here smirking or laughing about the situation i'm seeing it as a perfect thing to show like let's say i'm i'm, I'm gonna build a tree house for my for my kids i don't have kids but just pretend that i'm building a tree house up freaking up in the or over there looks look looks kind of good i wouldn't send my kids up there first i would go up there and wrestle myself to make sure that that structure can actually be solid enough for my my fake kids to be up there and if i can wrestle up there with my freaking pounds that i have on me my kids will be safe up there but if i didn't my kids would be you know i'm not gonna say dead but you know what i mean how would you know the U.S. government went so far as to classify all references to Vulcans included in the Sky Shield exercises. After all, if the RAF could practice nuke New York City, Washington, D.C., and even Chicago, the Soviets could do the same, if they could develop an aircraft as good as the Vulcan. As far as Strategic Air Command was concerned, the Vulcan episodes had never happened and the U.S. was well protected, and that protection, as I said, 99% effective. The Vulcans' successful attacks on America were only fully declassified in 1997, long after the Vulcan had left British service. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories oh. with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Again, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. I don't see it as anything negative, but I understand that <clears throat> they wanted to keep it as a secret. Because if that actually came out, that the defenses at that time, at that period, would be devastating. I, re I really enjoy this. And uh, if you haven't checked out Mark Felton, let's, I'm going to see if I can find the channel here before I say anything else. Uh, Mark, <clears throat> Mark Felton Productions. Uh, you find the link for the video we just watched. watched and of course, uh, the channel located right down there in the description. I go there and give them the support that he so much deserved. Um, let me know what you think. Are you with me, or is just plain embarrassing? Which would be kind of wrong for me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ricky. You. Stay safe.